Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 67 entitled Dedicated Hosts. My name is Tim Warner. Where are we in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ 900 objective domain? Well, today we start with the functional group Describe General Security and Network Security Features. The objective is Describe Azure's Security Features, and our granular skill is Describe the Functionality and Usage of Azure Dedicated Hosts. Point your browser to timw.info slash az900sg for the table of contents, and I've highlighted the videos that correspond to the most recent November 2020 updates from Microsoft. Let's get started. What are dedicated hosts? Well, host refers, in my mind, to a virtual machine. So yes, we're talking about the Azure Virtual Machine Service and the option where you can run your Azure VMs on your own hardware host in your region in the Microsoft data centers. This feature is intended for businesses who have higher security and isolation needs. We have to remember that Microsoft Azure is a public cloud. We talked about public, private, and hybrid clouds earlier in the study guide. Azure is also working on a multi tenant model where in their data centers they have hardware hosts or hardware servers on which not just your virtual machines live but also those of other customers. You would never know that and you'll never know who those other customers are but that's the way it is. That having been said, some businesses have a need for confirmation that, yes, we're running our VMs in the Azure cloud, but no, we're not sharing hardware with any other customer. So basically, you get your own server or servers. The pricing is per host, and you can store multiple VMs on the same host. It's not like you buy one server from Microsoft and you can have only one VM on it. You can go into the docs, and of course, I'll give you a link to the docs at the end of this lesson. But the idea is that you're going to do some capacity planning and figure out what size VMs you need, and then you can work with Microsoft to buy the host size that best fits your workload. And when I say buy a server, you know, again, this is a cross-reference elsewhere in the study guide, that Azure uses a consumption-based pricing model. So you're actually leasing or renting the server or servers. You're not buying them. Anyway, down at the bottom of this diagram, I show you the relevant vocabulary. First, we have an Azure resource called a host group, and this is basically a container that you populate with your dedicated hosts. Now, I'll mention more about this in the next slide, but these are, of course, region-bound within a particular region. And also, if your region has availability zones, they're going to be bound to a particular availability zone. And hopefully that makes sense. You can't have VMs running on one single hardware server with that one server spanning data centers, <laughs> right? So you've got your host group. That's your container. Your dedicated host, of which you can have one to end numbers. I mean, there's quotas and capacities and that kind of stuff. But you then create a contract with Microsoft for your dedicated host or hosts. And then when you deploy virtual machines, you want to be careful to deploy the VMs not into the standard multi-tenant world, but you want to specify your dedicated host in your host group. Now, the high availability issue is interesting. If you have a workload running in Azure Virtual Machines and you want to take advantage of availability zones within a region, you're going to have to keep that in mind, and that's obviously going to affect your pricing. You can see on the left side of the slide in our home region, Region A, we have two instances, or let's say at least two instances of a virtual machine, whether it's a web server, app server, database server, it doesn't matter. And we want one instance in each availability zone to provide that layer of high availability within a region. So that means you're going to need to have dedicated hosts and host groups in each of those availability zones. And then going further, if your workload is multi-regional, where you want to protect your workload against even a region level failure, notice that you've got the same thing. So in this case, if you want to use availability zones, let's say two availability zones in two regions, you're going to need four host groups, at least four dedicated hosts, and then you'll be careful to populate your VMs into the appropriate hosts and groups. In this demonstration, I'm going to take you at least partly down the path of using the dedicated host feature of Azure Virtual Machines. I'm logged into the portal here, and if you do a search for host groups, you can go to that appropriate blade, as you see here, and we can work through the creation workflow together. I'll create a new resource group called AZ900-RG, and again, we besides the host group name, I'll call this AZ900HG001, and then I have my home region, which in my case is East US. 
if we plan to use availability zones, we're going to need to specify the appropriate one. I'm not going to do that here. And then the fault domain refers to how many racks you want to spread your server across, because this is thinking about high availability within a single availability zone. And then you can have Azure automate host assignment. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to review and create, run a validation, and we'll create that container. Now we'll go to the resource. And just as I showed you a moment ago, once we have the host group, we can add a host. And this is a hardware host. I don't believe the subscription I'm using allows me to do this, so I'm not going to actually commit this change. But besides providing the traditional metadata, subscription, resource, group, name, and location, and I want to make sure to adjust that location appropriately, you choose a VM size family. And all of the VMs that are in that dedicated host have to be within that family. So what you'll want to do, of course, in the real world is really drill in using Azure monitoring tools to figure out which VM size you're going to go with or which family you're going to go with. And then you would choose the dedicated host appropriately. And then you can do further research in the docs. If we went with, for instance, DAS v4 family, you can look at how many virtual CPUs are on that host. And then you would do some division based on how many virtual CPUs you wanted to give to each virtual machine. And I'm going to stop here because my subscription's not compatible with this feature. The other thing I'm going to show is where you can assign a virtual machine to a host group. So let me add a virtual machine through the portal. And I'm just going to jump ahead to the appropriate page. The appropriate information in the Azure portal's Create a Virtual Machine Experience is on the advanced page, as you can see here. Let me scroll down. Doesn't matter whether you're using Windows Server or Linux, by the way. It's not about that. It's about the actual compute, the virtual and and or hardware compute. And so all we need to do here is specify the host group and then the host in that group, which I haven't yet created. Now, I would automate this in the real world because I would do all of my deployments using Azure Resource Manager templates, which I just finished teaching you, I think, in the previous lesson. Ah, how timely, how timely. But that ought to get you started anyway in terms of mapping your conceptual knowledge into hands-on practice. All right, learning resources number one, the dedicated hosts docs. Short link there is timw.info slash ded1. And the dedicated host pricing page is timw.info slash ded2. Remember that the exams, not just Azure Fundamentals, but none of the Azure exams get into the weeds in pricing. Number one, it's not something that you necessarily ever need to memorize. You just need to know where to go in the azure.com website hierarchy. And number two, pricing tends to be pretty variable given all of the different subscription offers that Microsoft presents, as well as regional price differences, etc. Lastly, you can read about dedicated host reservations at timw.info slash ded3. Now, we haven't talked about reservations yet. I'm actually going to pick that up in either the next lesson or the lesson after. Cool. Well, thus ends another lesson. Thank you so much for your attention and participation. In the next episode, we'll cover the OST and DPA, couple TLAs or three-letter acronyms to add to the pile that you already have in your conceptual tool belt. In the meantime, my Twitter handle is TechTrainerTim. My plural site courses are at timw.info ps. My personal website is techtrainertim.com. See you in that next lesson. Later.